using Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of a hypotenuse of a right triangle is a matter of plugging the shortest side and the medium length side into the formula and solving for h. In this example, the shortest side is 6 units in length and the medium length side is 8 units in length. I am going to replace my a and b with the 6 and the 8. It doesn't matter if I call the 6a or b. Using 6 as my a, I get 6 squared plus 8 squared equals h squared. In this case, h stands for hypotenuse and not height. 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, 36 plus 64 is 100. If h squared is equal to 100, then h is equal to the square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. Because no unit of measure was given in the problem, I'm just going to write 10 or 10 units. The hypotenuse in this blue right triangle is 10 units in length. Now most right triangles, when you use Pythagoras' theorem, will not give you a convenient round number like 10 as the answer. Very often the answer will be a decimal that has to be rounded off. Our second example, the red right triangle, is one of these examples. In this case, both the small sides are 5 units in length. There is no shortest side or medium length side this time. This is an isosceles triangle, but I can still replace my A and my B both with 5. So I get 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to C squared. Notice that in this case, instead of using an H for the length of my hypotenuse, I am using the letter C. I actually prefer this because of the confusion that can arise when you have H, which sometimes means hypotenuse and sometimes means height. In the case of this blue right triangle, the H would be the height would be 8. Using A, B, and C to me makes this a little bit more clear and avoids confusion. 5 squared is equal to 25. So I have 25 plus 25 equals c squared. 25 plus 25 is 50. We have 50 equals c squared. c is therefore equal to the square root of 50. And the square root of 50 is 7.07 .07 and the decimal keeps on going. I will round off to the nearest hundredth, 7.07. .07. Again, no unit of measure was given in the problem, so I will use the word units as my unit of measure. In the third example, the green right triangle, the short side is 40 units in length, and the medium length side is 70 units in length. I have done something else different with the formula. I am back to using h squared as my hypotenuse squared. h means the hypotenuse in this case, and this time I have my h squared on the left of the equal sign and the a squared plus b squared on the right. Some people will prefer to do this when they're searching for the hypotenuse because they feel more comfortable while doing algebra with the final answer being h, the unknown, equals a number. It doesn't matter if you use the formula in this form or in this form or in that form. All three of them are Pythagoras theorem, so do what you feel most comfortable with. Replacing my a and my b with 70 and 40 I get h squared is equal to 70 squared plus 40 squared. 70 squared is 4,900. And 40 squared is 1,600. Therefore, h squared is equal to the total of 4,900 and 1,600, which is 6,500. h, my hypotenuse, is therefore equal to the square root of 6,500.
which is 80.6225, and again the decimal continues onwards. I'm going to round off to the nearest hundredth, so it is 80.62. Again, since no unit of measure was given, I will just use the word units as my unit of measure. As you can see from these examples, using Pythagoras theorem is very straightforward. It is just a matter of replacing two of the letters in the formula with the side lengths of two of the sides given in the right triangle, and then using algebra to isolate the remaining unknown variable, and that is going to give you the length of your missing side.